In Russia, every year a large number of new models of off-road vehicles appear. Very interesting from a technical point of view. I have already told about their display at the All-Terrain Vehicle 2022 exhibition held in early December, and now I am talking about the demonstration of several new models of all-terrain vehicles in the conditions of their use. In recent years, snow and swamp-going vehicles such as the well-known Sherpa have received significant development. Short wheelbase two-axle off-road vehicles on ultra-low pressure tires with a side turn and chain drive of huge wheels. They swim well, and some are even able to get out of the water onto the ice. The wheels placed one behind the other in such snow and swamp vehicles determine the placement of the entrance from the end of the cab and, with reduced air pressure in the tires, provide a sharp increase in the contact patch with the ground almost at the level of tracked vehicles. Several of these snow and swamp vehicles took part in the winter test, including Big Bo, production of the Kostroma Laboratory of All-Terrain Vehicles, as well as two well-known to fans of conquering the off-road snow and swamp vehicle Phoenix, which have been produced in the city of Kurgan for several years and are considered one of the lightest wheeled models with a side turn. Unlike the vast majority of other similar snow and swamp vehicles, Big Bo is offered with an automatic transmission, which greatly simplifies off-road driving. For this car, the diesel engine and automatic transmission were borrowed from the Hyundai Accent. And one more interesting nuance. The Big Bo body is made of aluminum and plastic and differs not in utilitarian, but in luxury interior trim. The front door that enters the cab moves to the side, and does not fold down, like most of its counterparts. All in all, very interesting car. The topic of snow and swamp vehicles with a skid steer is actively developing in Russia, but alternative concepts are also developing. For example, Lesnik Extreme took part in the test. Outwardly, it resembles skid steer models, but it has a classic transmission and steering. Therefore, the bridges turned out to be installed away from each other, placing the entrance to the salon not in front, but on the side. The bridges used parts from a GA 66 off-road truck. All four wheels of the snow and swamp vehicle are steerable. That is, the rear ones, even in a turn, always follow the track of the front ones, which is important from the point of view of cross-country ability. The upper part of the body is aluminum, the lower part is steel. This is what the rear hatch looks like for entering the salon. Passenger seats are installed along the sides and can be transformed into a berth. There are also side doors for entry. And this is what the driver's workplace looks like. As you can see, it sits in the center, and what is important, there are not levers here, like in cars with a side turn, but a steering wheel. The gearbox is mechanical, and therefore the classic shift lever is located to the right of the driver. Another snow and swamp vehicle of the automobile scheme, which is called Typhon and is produced in the city of Novosibirsk. It's the only model we've tested that has classic automotive suspension, with springs from and sub and dampers from a light truck. It is thanks to the presence of such a suspension that the Typhon turned out to be the fastest. It is able to move off-road at a speed of 55-60 km per hour without loss of comfort, while all other wheeled snow and swamp vehicles on ultra-low pressure tires, for lack of a suspension, have this speed approximately two times lower. The bridges at the Typhon are from the Savu as Hunter, and in the engine compartment a Toyota engine with a working volume of 1.5 or 1.8 liters is installed, as well as a four-band automatic transmission, also from Toyota. The power unit is mounted so that the shafts leaving the gearbox do not go to the right and left wheels, but to the front and rear axles. The differential between them is blocked. The connection of both axles to the transmission is rigid. Mechanisms for blocking cross-axle differentials are provided. In terms of the chassis and transmission, and in terms of the layout of the cabin, the Typhon resembles rather not a special all-terrain vehicle, but a lifted sub. Apparently, because, and even taking into account the quite reasonable price, there is a high demand for it. According to one of the developers, about 120 of these off-road vehicles were sold in four years of production. The development of the design of off-road vehicles with a side turn does not stand still. For example, one of the two Phoenix Snow and Swamp vehicles turned out to be electric. Externally or in terms of interior layout, it does not differ from the model with an internal combustion engine, but it has at least two pluses. 
instantaneous access to maximum torque and environmental friendliness, which is important for those who operate such snow and swamp vehicles in areas with environmental restrictions. The electric Phoenix has zero exhaust emissions and is unusually quiet for such off-road vehicles. Another thing is that battery packs make any vehicle heavier, which is especially bad for off-road vehicles with their ground pressure limitations. And, most importantly, if the batteries are discharged somewhere in the swamp, what to do? If you have a snow and swamp going vehicle with an internal combustion engine, fill the tank with fuel from a canister and drive on. And what to do with an electric all-terrain vehicle is not clear. Some recommend carrying a generator with you, but this discredits the very idea of U200 BU200 electric drive. I have always believed that off-road vehicles will be the last ones to reach the wave of electrification of transport. But I was wrong. In fact, the number of all kinds of electric off-road vehicles in the Russian market is growing. Among the samples submitted for the test, in addition to the electric Phoenix, there were two more. The first is the little electric app manufactured by the Shagrash company from the city of Vologda. Please note, this altering vehicle is made according to an articulated scheme. Previously, Littell was known only with an internal combustion engine, and now an electric modification has appeared in the line of these all-terrain vehicles. And the second electric test participant is the Snedgear 2500 Snowbike, with an aluminum frame, a 4 kilowatt hour battery and a 25 kilowatt electric motor, such a snowmobile weighs 115 kilograms. The battery charge at a calm pace of movement is enough for him for about 40 kilometers or 2 hours. You can put a more capacious battery, then the power reserve will be more. Bullfinch 2500 is not a remake of a conventional motorcycle. It was originally designed as a snow bike, and therefore turned out to be lighter and more compact. However, there is one more direction of development of wheeled off-road vehicles that I have not mentioned before. Also highly passable, also floating and also on ultra-low pressure tires. But they are more compact, technically simpler, aesthetically more utilitarian, and therefore represent an affordable alternative to larger, solid, comfortable and expensive wheeled snow and swamp vehicles. Such off-road vehicles in Russia are called Karakat. On the test they were represented by two copies called Kraken. What can be said about such machines? They have little comfort, a rustic angular appearance, capacity and carrying capacity are also small. But in the pros, cheapness in the purchase and operation, as well as ease of transportation to the place where you have to move off-road. In the design, the maximum use of components from serial cars. The cabin is either completely open, or a tubular load-bearing frame with a removable transparent film is hoisted above it. In such an all-terrain vehicle, moving along a forest road, the main thing is not to get a branch on your forehead. Moreover, the chances of this for the driver and passenger are equal. As a rule, crickets are equipped with a Chinese engine with a capacity of 15 to 20 horsepower, paired with an automobile gearbox. Yes, car rockets have little comfort, but in terms of cross-country ability they are unlikely to yield to large snow and swamp vehicles. In any case, during the test the Krakens overcame the same obstacles and without noticeable effort. Off-road, the strength of such models is their relatively low curve weight. Given the low cost, there is a certain segment of the all-terrain market and a certain circle of buyers for Krakens and similar models. A good alternative to Krakens is compact tracked all-terrain vehicles, although they are slightly more expensive. On the test, such all-terrain vehicles were represented by two models called Dobrynya. Of course, one can argue here, but in my experience it is the tracks that are the best mover in off-road conditions. However, tracked all-terrain vehicles are a separate issue, and we will definitely talk about them.